All right, guys, what's up? New video. We're back at Alberto's shop, and I got here and started dressing the front end of the engine. Got all the pulleys on, alternator, power steering pump, uh, tensioner, all that kind of good stuff. That's all done. And I got to wait for him to help me start doing the uh, water port over here under the exhaust manifold to the back of the head, which I already started doing. So basically got a stock uh, water pipe from the water pump right here. And then you cut the stock piece off here. And you can always do just a simple, you know, just like generic coolant line but i can't stand coolant lines it just doesn't look good to me it looks cheap i just don't like it so i got some an line here went to the store got some uh, dash 10 male bung fittings and stainless steel so we're going to do the stock line we're going to do a dash 10 bung here just like that and it's going to route over the back of the head here to the back of the head uh port right here which will also do a dash 10 uh bung here so we'll probably cut this about here well the other bung that i have right here and then they basically just do a loop over just like that to the back of the engine now i have sufficient cooling to the back of the motor which would be a huge help with temps and the uh, life of this motor um like i said i can't tell if that's the whole reason why that we lost the other engine i can tell you right now it's not the only reason why but it's definitely a big factor but other than that after that pipe is done all that's welded up we're gonna uh have to make a new turbo drain line Right here, as you guys know, the 2JZ is probably about an inch and a half bigger, right, Alberto? A half inch bigger? Taller? Yeah, half an inch taller than the 1J, which means I need a longer drain line. And that is why I got some uh, just bare Dash 10 metal braided line for the oil drain. If you ever do an oil drain um, under the exhaust manifold, which is obviously going to be a drain, I would definitely suggest doing metal braided line because it can withstand temperature a lot better. And if you have a heat wrap, it does the job even better. So, uh, yeah. That's an agenda for today. Once that is done, we will bring this thing home and start dressing the whole thing up with the transmission, all that kind of good stuff. I do have the clutch and pilot bearing here to install while we're here so to make sure it's perfect and lined up. And then bring it home, put the trans on, and put this thing in the car. But uh, we do have a nice and brand new 1.5 JZ ready to go in. It looks great. Super happy with it. Let's get to work. So it turns out the oil drain line does fit with the 2J, even though it's a little bit taller. So I was worried about that. I prepared for it in case I had to do it, and now I don't have to do it. So that's good. So we're good on that. And now I'm actually rearranging these uh, water feed lines because I could not stand how I had them before. They're all over the place. They look like shit. Now we're doing it from here down right to the uh, neck right here. And this one to go from here to a 90 down under to the pump right there. Instead of having all those ugly lines everywhere else driving me out of my mind. Look like crap. I didn't have time to change at the time, but now I have time. So we're going to change all that good stuff. All right. So we're into an issue. My easy idea came into a more complicated one. So now we have to kind of cut here, turn this that way, and run it under the back of the uh, head. And then do a 180, or uh, rotating it this way back to here. So basically, couldn't do it because this is in the way, the fuel line, and then... It just wouldn't have worked the way I wanted it to. So now we got to kind of use some other parts um, to make this work here. We're going to take the old part that we cut off here, use that for a 45 degree to push it over here more. Do 180 here, down, over to the straight right here, and it worked pretty well. But uh, that is way yeah, too much work. it is way too much work, but I can't stand normal coolant lines. So, yep. So basically, like I said, we cut it off and now we're going to basically modify it so it can run straight to the back of, of the other side of the engine. So now I'll better we'll weld this right here and then we'll go straight back other side, 180 down from there and back to over here. So works out pretty well. All right. First part of this back part is done. Got this all bent and molded this way to a dash touch 10 it. straight fitting. Yeah, yeah, touch it, it's hot as shit. But, uh, no. First part's done, looks pretty good. Now we have a full line back here. Then we're gonna do this side on the 180 degree fitting down to here. It's gonna be a really small line, isn't it? <laughs> it's gonna be so small. <laughs> oh well, more legit than freaking crappy hoses all right so the whole thing is finished stock line to a dash 10 line right back to the back of the engine back of the head so it'll all be cooled down now 
with this, um, it keeps the coolant lower than the front of the engine. So instead of having that little like air bubble that normally gets stuck over here, you have to like raise the car. So the system, this is lower than stock. So it should like bleed out a lot easier without having to jack up the car, the whole nine yards. So it's a uh, way better design and uh, actually very clean. I mean, yeah, the fire like should lot. be close to it, but once you put this on, it's actually lower profile than the back head drain from an RB. Right. Sweet. I'm stoked. All done. Now we got to get uh, this thing home pretty much. But uh, this is all done finally. So very stoked on it that. It does have this little curve right here. So that hose. Yep. So we had to make it like this. Push it back out further so the uh, fuel you line can fit. Here, where you have like the right fitment for the return line. But you also don't, don't, don't interfere with the intake manifold. It's yep. like right where it needs to be. Perfect. And don't mind my ghetto fix. It's so ugly, I know. But I have new valve covers right here, ready to go. I have to get new fittings for them to do new Dash 10 bungs for the catch can. And then get these things powder coated. A new kind of black I'm going to do. And then get them on the car, all brand new. So it can look really good and have it all perfect. All right, it's time for the last step at Alberto's shop is to get the action twin disc clutch on there. Flywheel's already on. And then get the ARP bolts on there with some Loctite. And then comes the twin disc uh, clutch itself. And then we are finally done here, bringing it home to get this thing ready to go. Permatex orange, which is a mixture, thread, lock. thread locker. It's like a mixture of the red and blue, right? Something like that? The power of red with the ability to remove as blue. Got it. Perfect. So that stuff's uh, really best good. Of one, best of yeah, I need to get some of that stuff. But uh, yeah, don't mind the nasty valve covers. These are not going to be on the engine. It's just to cover the engine until we get the new ones all done up uh the bungs were not in stock again it's also christmas week so everybody's closed and nothing's in stock so on monday when we get back from the holidays we'll get new bungs get those done and powder coated on the engine all right how much you got oh i think mine now can i have one please it's like 20 bucks get Sean. the hell out of my damn face sure you can have thank one. you so you do your job right thank okay, you cool. permatex is sick they have awesome products hopefully i can get on alberto's wave one day but uh yeah this stuff's awesome, and definitely gonna use a lot of this stuff. You gonna put it on the ground and do that? No. That's scary. Why? I don't know, it's freaking me out. All right, so we do have a brand new pallet bearing. The other one I had kind of got messed up and we got that taken care of. So now, uh, if you guys remember the last time with the trans, we had a really hard time getting the trans in. The input shaft was having a hard time getting to the uh, pallet bearing. So now we have a metal uh, clutch alignment tool and not a plastic one. So now there's no play and it's super tight and super even. So it all will be equal going into the pallet bearing so we can have, uh, have the trans go in at ease. So it's gonna be a lot better and a lot more accurate so hopefully we have no issues and now it'll go on nice and snug it won't have any failures oh yeah that's way better <laughs> jeez oh, i got the action clutch twin disc in there and now with the actual clutch alignment tool, it's literally spot on perfect. Look at that. Literally perfect. Stop That's sick. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm not moving. It's the damn engine moving back and forth. But yeah, we are all done here. Time to bring it home. Thanks so much for helping me out on this whole thing. Home. Finally home and get the uh, dog box on, put it in the car tonight, let it sit to us for the holidays, and then they get this thing running. I hope nobody be copying this. This is auto work and... All I thought, yeah, it came out like super cool. Yeah, I'm stoked on it. All right, engine is in fourth engine, but now it's 1.5 JZ. 
Hopefully I had good luck with this engine. I'm gonna change the injectors, gonna change all the good stuff. New tune. And uh, yeah, should be good. But I'm gonna do a little bit of dressing up, but tonight is uh, the day before the holidays and I gotta get going. So well, I'm gonna do a little bit and leave the rest for till after the holiday to finish it all up. But you guys have obviously seen me do this many, many times now. So I'm gonna use YouTube magic and then it's gonna be done. Boom. All right, that's it for tonight. Time for the holidays, we're doing some more parts, and then we'll be good to go to button this whole entire thing up, but it's a big accomplishment to have a whole new engine in in a little over a month since the last motor went. But uh, now 1.5 JZ is in the engine bay, ready to go, super excited, and now we wait, and then come back to it. All right, back from the holidays and back home. Now, for the holidays, got the engine here, kind of sitting in the engine bay, almost fully dressed up, and now our plan of attack is to finish up the buttoning up of this new swap. So got some new wire loom here, got the oil, gear oil, power steering fluid, and these spark plugs. And the first plan of attack is gonna get some uh, new spark plugs in there. The BKR8 EIX spark plugs. If you run over 20 PSI, you gotta run those thanks to you, Master. If you run below 20 PSI of boost, you can run BK7s, which is also fine. But we're gonna max this turbo out pretty good at this bigger engine for now. I do plan doing a turbo swap later on, but for now we're gonna run 3071 on our turbo. And then uh, next will be the oil and all that kind of good stuff and getting this thing pretty dressed up and done -zo. Once that's done, put the front end back on and then continue on with the swap. Hopefully my new oil cooler will come in next week. Uh, Andrew is getting that done, but the cores are on back order, so he's working with that and uh, all that kind of good stuff. So that'll be in pretty soon. Then the oil cooler lines will have to be taken off and remade. And then we'll clean out the oil sandwich plate to get all the crap out of there. Hopefully it's all you know clean and not contaminated so we can go back on this fresh motor, all clean and ready to go. So. If you have gone through what I've gone through, please always replace the oil cooler, take out all the old lines, all that good stuff, and completely redo it all, please. It will save you a lot of money and time. If that is not why I've had the cash track failures, I do that regardless of what happens. But uh, yeah, let's get to it. First up, spark plugs go in, gap in 21, get those in, start relooming, and then uh, we'll be ready to go. I like spark plugs and coil packs are in. I'll be doing this later on. I don't really see that in the engine bay because it's covered by the coil pack cover, so not a big deal. Up next, we'll get all uh, the engine hooks off, all that kind of good stuff. Get this all reloomed and looking nice. Got to tighten this, all these AM lines down, all that kind of good stuff. Go over everything once more, then fluids, and then good to go. All right, so this stuff's out O'Reilly's. It's uh, generic stuff, but it looks really, really good. It's a new product they have at O'Reilly's. And it looks super nice and super clean. I'm gonna try it out. I usually use the DEI stuff, but they didn't have it, so I'm assuming this is the new stuff. And it looks great. Smaller size here, bigger size here for the bigger wiring. I'm gonna make it all look nice and pretty, so it look professional. I can't stand shitty looking wiring, and you know, just wires. I can't stand that kind of stuff. So I'd rather have it looking nice. Once again, looking like an engine. I'm so stoked on this. Got the new wiring all loomed up. Looks so much better than before. No more ugly little wiring, all, nothing burnt, nothing, you know, looking crappy, looking real nice. Got this clear cover back on, but it's kind of old and kind of like scratched up and like kind of splattered out. But I'll get a new one later on, but I just wanted to have it on there so I can put the cam cover, I mean, so I can put the uh, cool pack cover on there. So uh, up next, we'll get the front end on just to get it on there, get the radiator in. Uh, this is not going to be a final assembly. I just want to get it in there so I can like feel satisfied to have a new engine in my car so I'm not stressed out like crazy because I cannot stand when my engine in my car is apart. It drives me nuts. I'm just over it. But uh, just so I can feel good, I'm going to put the whole front end on, radiator in, mock everything up so I have to uh, see 
if I have to change anything because the engine is uh, about a half inch taller. Now, the only thing I already know of is this right here, my uh, swirl pod, if you wanna call it, is definitely hitting the hood, which kinda sucks. So what we're gonna have to do is, we'll have to cut probably about right here and uh, take about a half inch off of it and then uh, put it back down and then re-weld it and then get it repowder coated and put it back on the car. Pain in the ass, but it's part of the game. We can do 1.5 JZ. Uh, also, the exhaust is not liking it either. Again, it's a half inch taller. So we're gonna have to probably have to modify the downpipe to make it fit with the with this engine. But I'm pretty sure if I have an extra hand to hold the bottom while I get this up to the turbo, it'll work. But uh, definitely gonna have to have some fabrication either way. Um, but the piping for the intercooler all fits perfectly still. That's gonna be easy to adjust because it's a cup where you can kind of wiggle it and make it work, but it's not even close to even like like being drastically different. But the exhaust has to be changed. This has to be changed. And uh, that's about it. But now with the new waterline routing, it looks so much cleaner and much better. I do want to change the uh, catch can uh, line to go kind of like this way back around to here, but it's kind of like, might look like shit. We'll see what it, we'll see. But uh, yeah, because people always get mad at me for having it over the turbo, but even though it's heat wrapped, but I mean, what are you gonna do? We'll figure it out. But uh, other than that, it's looking pretty good so far. I got a little ahead of myself, but uh, the whole entire engine is in all front end, everything all ready to go. And uh, I'm sorry, I, haven't, I didn't film it, but I've filmed this so many times by now, you guys know the drill, I'm not gonna get too into detail, but there's some things you gotta button up, like the oil feed line and uh, the injector stuff, all that kind of good stuff. But uh, for the most part, it is installed and ready to rip. I've done it so many times now, I get it done so fast. I get in the zone, I just go, go, go. So uh, yeah, but it looks so good. It's a little bit taller, you can actually see it. Well, you guys won't know, but I can see it, but it's pretty dope. Bigger engine, 2JC bottom end, 1JC non VTI head, and uh, I am so stoked that it's in the car. I feel so much better. I can't stand when it's apart, but uh, it's a good feeling overall. But uh, up next is a little tedious stuff that I will film, and hope you guys enjoy it. All right, so up next, the big move is getting the injectors inspected and cleaned. So I have them out right here, all labeled. I have them all right here, all labeled up. I'm gonna look out for five and six, especially because those are the two that were uh, not the greatest. So uh, hopefully they'll be good. And we're gonna have a whole entire uh, flow map all printed out so we can look at what's going on. And uh, if they're not great, we'll have them fixed, cleaned, and all that kind of good stuff. If they're shot, we'll get new ones. Hopefully we can make them work, repair the bad stuff on them, clean them out, and then we'll be good. But they were clean before I put them back in the car. I, I cleaned them myself at a machine, but it wasn't like the place we're going to now. My buddy Michael has his own injector cleaning company, which uh, is awesome. It's very close to me, so we're going to go there right now, get them all full tested, and have a whole graph and everything so we can see what's going on. So let's go. All right, see what happens. <laughs> well, this makes sense. That's uh, all over the place. Those are, yeah. Oh my God. All right, so that explains it. That <laughs> it was definitely why I was running rich lean, rich lean. But uh, I'm glad we did this. So now we can actually tell what's going on. But wow. All right, so weighing it right now. Where does weighing it do exactly? I don't even know about this stuff. So. Instead of like what most other people do, they're using graduated cylinders to tell you exactly what the flow rates are like over the course of a minute. Um, I actually use a volumetric weight of this test fluid I use. I take the specific gravity and I calculate over time how many times the injectors opened and how much weight came out. And I can punch it right into the computer and tell uh, cc's per minute and times per hour. So they're all over the place. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> very, very that explains bad. it. So now they're gonna put cylinder five and six in there and cylinder six is what melted. I don't know if it was a tuning issue or injector issue, but right now it's definitely injector issue as we can see. So now we're gonna put five and six in to see how those were compared to the other ones. So, oh boy. So as you can see, six is definitely not uh, not happy and five is like a lot different spray pattern compared to the rest of them. But it, I mean, it's not that bad, but that little bit is enough to. Oh yeah. Destroy your motor. 
Wow. All right, so this is all his stuff. I'm gonna let him explain because I don't know how to explain it properly. So go ahead. So like right here, you can see this right here is the deviation before uh, any cleaning was done, 8.06%. I always tell everyone we shoot for less than 2%. 5% um, is like the upper limit of like almost dangerous, but your car will probably run and not notice it. Right. But we're seeing like low, high, low, high, high, low with an average of almost a thousand cc <laughs> but they're supposed to be 1100 yep that's um, pretty bad we're hoping they're just dirty i uh, hope so but even if honestly like yeah I don't they might not to. be no <laughs> we'll see but i highly doubt it but there's our proof of why uh we've had some issues so basically here all we're doing is directly back flushing the injector so at the end of the day the in inlet of the injector is a lot bigger than the outlet is outlet's really small at least on these and um any particulate that makes its way into the inlet of the injector is going to get stuck at that outlet and it will never go anywhere it'll be there eternally and you put it in a flow bench and like people are like yeah it's cleaning it out but it's not unless you ever take the time to flip them upside down and actually back flush them right. so i hit them with operating pressure typically if there's some that i know they're super dirty i'll hit them with like 80 psi just to really really knock the stuff out of there i'll do a static wide open hold it open for 30 seconds and just flush it and uh this is typically the ticket to clean any injector gotcha like, always never knew that it's really interesting and now hopefully it'll help but we don't know for sure but mm -hmm. you got to try yeah. but it's not looking good to what we saw but hey you never know but honestly like i just want to change them but if it's good it's good i mean it's whatever true. it's not a voltage thing which is good yeah you know all right it's, it is looking a little better but it can be deceiving like he says but i i'm not i don't know we'll see what happens but it definitely is looking better than before but we'll see what it's done that looks really good that, that's like perfect is am i wrong or is no, that like they look, they look great now almost dead nuts wow that looks like about two percent just eyeballing it Jeez. all right that's good so far that's, that's good all right so really good news go ahead so you look right here you got 9.76 percent flow deviation right off the get-go um at 999 cc's per minute or so um, right here after the cleaning and the final test we're at 1.41 percent deviation wow. almost 1100 cc's which is about what we're that's looking good at. that's um, really good it saves me money in time yeah <laughs> that's awesome that's crazy what a simple cleaning can do but the backflow thing was definitely the back flush was like definitely key it makes total sense i don't know why i haven't even thought about that but wow okay now we're going to test five and six that was what i was most worried about and hopefully they'll be the same as those which i'm guessing they will be but we'll see definitely well, good news. I just saved a thousand bucks thanks to you. <laughs> Got them all clean and now they're all even and look great. I can't believe that. I was worried that they're just shot, but they're not. And they're really good, which is a great sign for time-wise. I could probably start the car. No, I can't start the car. I'm damn fitting. Oh, well. But if I had the thing I have at home, I could start the car today. But now I feel safe to run the car. Wow. I'm very relieved. Hell yeah. Simple cleaning. Got this all taken care of. If you need an injector's clean, CPFI. Michael right here. I've known him for a long time at BMX years ago. It's funny. Everybody in cars knows each other from BMX. It's, it's true. Everybody does this or tuning or fuel stuff. It's crazy. But uh, he's out of Merritt Island, Florida. If you need anything done, hit him up. This is amazing. And it saves you a lot of time and money. And, uh, yeah, I'm stoked. And he has a full graph I'll show you guys on camera in a second to uh, show all the information. All right, so this is really cool right here. This is before, and that's obviously why we had major issues. And here it is after. Now they're all tight and all properly in spec. And uh, before I did clean them clean, not like this, but it was a little ultrasonic, you know, thing. It doesn't really count, but like this is crazy how simple that was. And now we have good injectors again. And uh, hopefully the engine will be great now, which it definitely will because that's an issue. That's a big, big issue. And that explains why we had all the issues we had. But thank you again, Michael. You guys, you killed it. No I'm problem. stoked. Uh, I'll put Instagram in the link below and I'll put it on Instagram on my Instagram as well. So Very happy with this. All right guys, that will be it for this video. The 1.5 JZ is officially in the S13 almost ready to go We're working on two parts right now, which is the uh, Drift motion water port pipe that goes from the water neck to the pump If you guys didn't know like I said before the 2J is a half inch taller and this stock pipe right here cannot reach from the the pump to the uh, neck right here so there's a pipe they make that is long enough to reach and then we're also working on the uh, vvti port 
oil feed fitting. Since we are using a 2JZ GE block, the oil feed fitting will not be on the normal side like GTE engines. It will be on this side and we will be using the VVTi port for the oil feed for the turbo because this is a non-VVTi engine and you'll need that port and use a 16 by one five fitting to dash four for the oil feed. So that's the only thing we're working on right now and working on some exhaust modifications as well. And I put this engine in, and again, this is a taller engine, it's a bigger engine, and it's sitting really, really, really high. Like, usually the turbo is like below the strut tower. I put the engine in properly with the same mount as before, and I don't know if I messed up or somehow they're sitting kind of high, but the engine looks really high. Usually the valve covers are below this entire firewall right here. Maybe I messed up, maybe I'll have to readjust it later on, but maybe it's just the size of the engine now. But I don't like it, so I'm gonna try and get some different mounts and throw them in there so I can have this the, at the exact height that I wanted. But right now, it is okay, but it's kind of bothering me, but we'll see. But the clearance is very, very tight. This is hitting the hood. I don't like that. That kind of sucks. And we gotta figure all that stuff out, but it will run the way it is, obviously. But we're almost there, guys, almost there. But the best part of this video is we found the culprit of our engine issues. One of the culprits, which was the injectors being extremely, extremely dirty. So uh, they're all clean now, they're in the car, ready to go, and we're not gonna have any more issues. And new tuning, the injectors are cleaned, new engine, the coolant lines on the back of the engine should be a proper cooling throughout the whole motor, so everything will stay cool and run great. So uh, we should not have any more issues from now on, and we have more power. And now this engine is a 2JZ bottom end, and now we'll be able to push more power than ever before. So I am very excited. So with that being said, in the next video, we should be able to fire this thing up, and I'm really excited to see how it sounds. It's going to sound completely different than before, more deeper tone, like a 2J, and I'm very excited, and I'll see you guys very soon.